Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. Each week we address issues of timely and timeless concern with newsmakers and the journalists who report on them, with artists, writers, scientists, educators, social scientists, government leaders. We speak with each one to one. Today, we get to know the actress Jane Fonda as a person, thanks to her longtime friend, writer, and Vanity Fair contributing editor, Patricia Bosworth. Her latest book, Jane Fonda, The Private Life of a Public Woman, is just published by Houghton Mifflin. It's already in the New York Times bestseller list. It draws on close friends and family, and Miss Fonda herself, for its meticulous research, and it's a great read. Patricia Bosworth met Miss Fonda in 1961 when they were both studying with the legendary Lee Strasberg at the Actors Studio. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. There have been other biographies of Jane Fonda. So why did you decide to write another one? Well, and then, the, and then there was her book. <laughs> that's well. right, which is a wonderful, wonderful memoir, and I drew from it a lot. Uh, well, there had been nine biographies written by men about, Jay, wow, about Jane. Wow, nine. <laughs> and she wanted, she really did want a woman to write her biography. And she knew me because I'd done a lot of stories on her. And uh, I also told her I wanted it to be a cultural history of the time because I feel she reflects the decades right. with all of her transformations. So that, that's why uh, it came to be. The image that many people have of Jane Fonda is a very talented actress who was a very strong woman and who was her own woman, a political activist who took on very unpopular causes, such as her defense of the Viet Cong, um, an ardent feminist, a successful businesswoman, someone who was not afraid of her sexuality. And yet in your book, you write about a woman who was very insecure and often gave herself over to men and let them control her life. Yeah, well, it's a complicated situation. You're absolutely right. She is a very strong woman, very strong, very ambitious, very achieving, who has achieved an enormous amount. That's one part of her. But there is this other part that remains very insecure. I think most of that is because of her father. She, I mean, the whole book to me is really a, the story of a woman trying to be acknowledged and affirmed and loved by her father. Henry Fonda never showed his love for Jane. Even though I think he did love her, he was not able to show this. And Jane's whole life was, was, in a way, trying to get that love. And she got it, as, as you know, through, through achievement, mostly. But uh, there was always a part of her that remained very insecure. And this was reflected in her relationships with men. She almost tried to repeat the relationship she had with her father. In mm -hmm. other words, the men were usually domineering, controlling, sometimes not very nice, all of which her, her father had those characteristics. And she and, seemed to need that. Now, her, her mother, Frances, committed suicide after Henry Fonda left her. Um, was Jane, in a sense, sort of like her mother in terms of her dependence on men? Do you think? Well, in a way, she, was, she really is a lot more like her mother than I realized. I mean, as I researched the book, I realized her mother was, was very self-involved, very concerned with her looks. Uh, Jane became very self-involved and concerned with her looks. This is just one level of her as a woman and uh, obsessed with money. Her mother was also obsessed with money. So in those ways, yes, her, she was like her mother a lot. I think a lot of people know about Jane Fonda's troubled relationship with her father. Uh, what I didn't know about and what I learned about in the book was what a womanizer Henry Fonda was. Wasn't that surprising? I know. <laughs> well, I, I only found out when I talked to his fourth wife, Afdera Fonda, and she told me what an incredible womanizer he'd been. He was irresistible to women, very sexy, mm -hmm. uh, and had many, many affairs while he was married to, to Mrs. Henry Fonda, with Frances Fonda, Jane's, Jane's mother. In fact, at one point, and Jane puts this in her, her own book, um, her father uh, got a woman pregnant, and there was a scandal. They had to hush it up with money and that kind of thing. Now, did Jane sort of, I get the feeling that she sort of stumbled into acting. Would you say that, or? Well, she kept denying that she wanted to be an actress. And I think part of it was that she was afraid she'd have to compete with her father and maybe try to be as good as he was. He was one of the great actors of the, of the movies with Grapes mm -hmm. of Wrath and all these wonderful movies that he'd made. She stumbled on it in that she she wasn't uh, consciously trying. She was almost fighting against it until until finally, finally she did this one play with her father. It was just a, a little revival of, of, a, of a play called Country Girl, and she loved it. She loved it, and she of course she was acting with her father too. Mm -hmm. But she realized that she had talent. How much did I, I know um, the children of? Acting stars often deny that you know they had it easier than anybody else. I mean, to what extent did her being Henry Fonda's daughter help advance her 
get her going? Well, I think it got her in every door. Uh, he <laughs> is one of the most legendary Hollywood figures. It's, it, she, he's part of Hollywood royalty like John mm -hmm. Wayne and uh, Clark Gable, you know, of that period. Oh, I, thought, I thought it did make it, it easier for her to get in the door, but then she had to prove herself. Right, right. Now, she first gained international attention, notoriety, as a sort of sex kitten. Absolutely. In roles like, was it Barbarella? Barbarella. Barbarella. That's when she was really promoted as right. a sex symbol. Um, and that was a, a role that uh, Roger Vadim yeah, Roger Vadim was her, her first husband, a French, uh, French director who had discovered Brigitte Bardot and loved women and did want to turn Jane into this incredible sex symbol, which he did. Did he, what, did he exploit her in, her, in your view? Uh, I suppose he did in a way, but I think, I think she enjoyed it. In other words, I think she wanted to be famous. Uh, I also think she was very much in love with him. As I say, he was irresistible. You suggested he was the great love of her life. I, I think he was. I, I don't know whether Jane would agree with mm -hmm. me, but, but he seemed to be. He was such a wonderful man in so many ways. Uh, and, and, and he gave her such a, a, a terrific, interesting, exotic kind of life in the beginning. Now, Tom Hayden does come across as a, a real user and an opportunist. What, what were your feelings about him as you researched Well, I had, I had very mixed feelings about him. I think he was an enormously important figure in the New Left. He was a great political activist, a brilliant man. Uh, I think in the beginning, Jane and he had a very good marriage. She wanted to marry him partly because she wanted him to teach her many things about history and politics, and he affirmed her as a political activist. And also they, they worked together in, in many causes. This was very important to her, and I think she enjoyed this. But once she became even more famous, because you, know, you know, she made her great, the greatest movies of, of, of her career were made during the time she was married to Tom Hayden, like Coming Home and mm -hmm. China Syndrome and, you know, uh, Nine to Five, where she played the rebel secretary. All these movies, by the way, kind of defined her political evolution. She became so famous, and then with the workout, even more famous. By the way, that was, they were all done to kind of further Tom Hayden's career in terms of the money that she made always went into his campaigns and I, his political career. I was surprised um, to the extent that she basically supported them. She did, always. She supported all of her, uh, I mean, her two first husbands. Roger Vadim, too. Roger Vadim, <laughs> but then Ted Turner, no. Ted Turner did take care of her. Right. But, but back to what I was saying about, about Tom Hayden, I think it was a very hard for him to live with somebody who was so famous. It really, he was threatened by it. He once told Barbara Waters, I can't stand it. She gets too much attention. Nobody should get that much attention. That kind of thing uh, was I hard was, for him. I was also surprised to learn how modestly, I mean, you know, she was making money and pouring it into his organizations and to his causes, but they lived in this dinky little house and Well, he didn't, he didn't like any kind of show. For example, she once had a Cartier watch on and he told her he did, just <clears throat> couldn't stand looking at the Cartier watch, so she changed it to a Timex. She had a strange relationship with Andreas Vutsinas, is that correct That's pronunciation? Right. Yes. A gay man who was this one of the Spengali's in her life? Tell me he about was, that. He was probably the biggest Spengali, and as a matter of fact, he, she didn't write about this at all in her book. She was so bitter about that relationship, she'd become totally under his spell, under his control. He was a, an acting coach, and an, actually a very gifted acting coach, and an, a, sort of an interesting actor, who Mel Brooks used in several movies, because Andreas was also close to Anne Bancroft. Um, Andreas did cast a spell over her. He got, uh, he used to coach actors, and he had gotten a lot of actors into the actor's studio, and Jane wanted to get into the studio more than anything, and Andreas coached her, and she did indeed get into the studio, and she thought he, he was the answer. She'd also known Marilyn Monroe, who had a coach, Paula Strasberg, and Jane thought, maybe this will, this will help me. She was so insecure at that point. And so Andreas became her coach, her mentor, even her lover for a while, and they lived together for three years and then broke up, but they kept in touch for the next 10 years and also kept sort of in touch for the rest of their lives. But she did break bitterly with him. Now Jane had a reputation for being sexually promiscuous when she was in college. Was she more sexually adventurous than other actresses of her time? I don't, or? no, I think Jane was loved, loved sex, was very independent and free, <laughs> as we all were in those days before the advent of AIDS, seriously. I think women in those days were freer than, than they are now because of what's been happening. Her life seemed to have 
very distinct phases in it. There was the actress, there was the activist, there was the exercise guru, there was a trophy wife, now she's born to a mellow grandmother phase. Yeah, yeah, phase. that's right, yeah, yeah. She was an activist for many causes um, before she settled on being primarily an anti-war, mm -hmm. anti-Vietnam war activist for Native American rights, for civil mm -hmm. rights, Black women's rights. Was she politically naive in her activism, do you think? I think in the very beginning she didn't know anything about anything, but she, she <laughs> had a conscience, okay? And, and when she was in Paris and she'd seen the, the newsreels of the Vietnam War and the destruction in that country, she wanted to be a part of the anti-war movement, but she didn't really know how. I mean, she, she learned through, through experience and... And trial through, and error. And oh, a lot of trial and error, and she admits to that. She literally didn't know what she was doing in, in the beginning. Now, she did have a lot of success in her endeavors. I mean, she she seemed really to have the Midas touch. Uh, first, as an actress, I mean, when she took off, she really took off. Uh, she did point out that uh, uh, the United States did stop bombing the Dipes in, in, in North Vietnam after her protests and along with others. Others, sure. Uh, and we, we did end the war there. Her workout studios and videos were enormously successful. She sort of seemed to have her finger on the pulse of whatever the the times were. Yeah, she really reflects the times, the, the, the decades. It's amazing. I think it's uh, instinctive with her. But, you know, she's very turned on by, uh, and, and energized by this the, 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 the kind of culture that we have in this country, which is ever-changing and always mm -hmm. exciting and, and energizing. And I think it turns her on. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more with Patricia Bosworth, author of Jane Fonda, The Private Life of a Public Woman, after the following message. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York, and I'm talking with Patricia Bosworth, author of Jane Fonda, The Private Life of a Public Woman. It's just been published by Houghton Mifflin. Um, for a long time, uh, you know, Fonda was, uh, we were talking about her political involvement and perhaps some of the naivete that may have been involved in some of it. And she was vilified for a long time for being Hanoi Jane for her, the right. part that she, she took. She still is, as you know. Is she still? Yes, there are like six million hate sites on her really? on the web. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've gotten some hate mail since uh, since the book was published. Okay, because I, th I, I thought that that had eased up somewhat. But I think it's eased up somewhat. It's certainly not covered so much in the press, but mm -hmm. uh, it's very definitely there. I think it always will be. Well, she admits that she made a mistake by sitting down at that anti-aircraft Gun. Where was she in? She was in North. She was in North Vietnam. Okay. Vietnam, <laughs> outside of Hanoi, and she sat on this anti-aircraft gun. It looked as if she was pointing the gun at our planes, American right. planes, which she wasn't. Right. But uh, the picture was taken and shown all over the world, and and, and she's been vilified ever since. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the the breakup with uh, Tom Hayden affect her? I think she was devastated. I mean, she. She, she felt she'd failed in some way, and she had a, a almost like a breakdown. I mean, she lost a great deal of weight, and I remember talking to a Newsweek correspondent who said that they'd t talked to her and asked her how she was, and she said she was on her exercise bike for six hours until my butt is bleeding, but I, I, I am, I'm just breaking up inside. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. pretty horrible kind of description of what happened to her. Talk about her relationship with her children. Uh, not so good with Vanessa, better with Troy? Well, it, it's, it's a complicated mm -hmm. relationship with her daughter. Her daughter, she left her daughter. And this was her daughter with her, Vadim. Her, her daughter by, by, by Vadim. Vanessa, she left her daughter to go off to protest the war, and for many years, Vanessa just couldn't forgive her for that. I think they've, I think they've reconciled. They have a very tempestuous relationship, but I do believe they love each other very much. Mm -hmm. And with Troy, Troy was different. She always had him with her, even when she would have a massage when he was a baby. Right. She would have, little baby would be lying next to her. And um, she seemed to have good relationships with her, uh, now. Her, 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 her sorry. <laughs> 
her former lover's husband's That's children right. and with her their wives. You her know. stepchildren. She, right. has, she, is, she is friendly with everybody. Uh, she's good friends with her, with her stepchildren, with her, her, her children, uh, the, ch the children that she kind of adopted that were Ted Turner's children. Mm -hmm. She has a huge surrogate family. Right. She travels with them. She's very close to all of them. I've met most of them and interviewed most and of them. And there was a young black girl that she Absolutely. Oh, sort of adopted? Mary Lou Williams, an incredible woman who is now a forest ranger, is writing a book about, uh, you know, being Raised by Jane Fonda, an amazing woman. And how did that, how did that happen? Well, Jane had a had an arts camp with Tom Hayden outside of uh, L.A. in in Santa Barbara, and and uh, had children from all over the world, all nationalities, including, by the way, Angelina Jolie went there when she was a little girl, and Mary Lou was there as as a as a student. Uh, Jane had met her through some Black Panthers, and because uh, Jane was very very supportive of the Black Panthers at one point. And Mary Lou was an unhappy little girl and uh, really sort of lost. And Jane took her under her wing and eventually adopted her informally. Uh, she lived with her, Mary Lou did, when she was a teenager and then went to college, but always with Tom and Jane as her surrogate parents. And she is a, a truly amazing woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's in California? No, yeah. she's, now, she's now in Alaska, I believe. Oh, oh okay. She's a forest ranger. Wow, wow. <laughs> But a truly interesting woman. Jane Fonda's relationship with Ted Turner seemed to be the the most strange. <laughs> Not maybe real. it was. Maybe it wasn't. No, I don't um, think, no, I don't think so. But it, it it appeared that the you know the activist dynamic Jane Fonda we thought we knew suddenly became a trophy wife. Was that not true? Well, she was a trophy <coughs> wife, but she and Ted Turner were very much alike in in many ways. They were both narcissists. They were both enormously ambitious, enormous achievers. They both had a lot of money. They were equals in many ways. So it, in the beginning, I think it was a great partnership, and Jane did want to give up. Her career for a while and be taken care of for the first time in her life, and I think she loved it for about seven months. And then, oh, after, and then no, what happened? Seriously. <laughs> well, first of all, Ted Turner was unfaithful, but also Jane became restless. I mean, all she was doing was going from ranch to ranch, redecorating the ranches. Twenty Had, was how many ranches? Twenty-seven ranches. She that's redecorated that's them all. That'll keep, that'll keep you busy for a while. But she she begged him not to buy the last ranch because she just didn't want to have to redecorate mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. But but in all seriousness, uh, I think she wanted to have her own life. Life again. She wanted to do things, be more independent, and he didn't want that. He was very controlling. She could never leave the room. She had always had to be with him at all times. Right. And, right. and plus, he he was not faithful, so that was not good. Her life now. What is it like? I think it's it's probably for her the best it's ever been. She's independent. She does have a, a, a wonderful boyfriend, Richard Perry, but she uh, and he's wonderful and loving to her. But she is doing exactly what she wants, which is to work with her philanthropic projects, to act. She now has another new book. But she's doing what she wants to do. But she's independent, I think, for the first time. Mm -hmm, and and mm -hmm. I, I think she's happier than she has ever been. Her relationship with her brother Peter seems to be. He's Peter seemed to be, you know. Oh, he's great. He's he the greatest. He seems to be kind of mellow through he all. He is a very <laughs> mellow guy. I adore Peter, and I think he gave me the best <laughs> advice that anyone could give uh, about Jane and, and about her version of her life. Uh, he said she does have a version of her life, but there are many other versions, and I want you to get all those other versions because mm -hmm. they're all equally interesting. Now, what he is he great. doing now, Peter? He, he works a little bit, but he just got married again. Okay. I, I don't know much about his life at this point. Mm -hmm. I think he's a great actor. A wonderful oh. actor. Okay, okay. Of her, of her movies, uh, did she, what were her favorites? Jane Fonda's movies. I think Clute and Coming Home. Clute mm -hmm. because you know she played the, this this angry call girl, but she she expressed so much of herself in that movie. Her doubts, her fears, her feelings about sex. I, I just thought it was an amazing performance. Were those two that she won the Oscars for? As That's well? right. And Coming Home, which is about the uh, handicapped. Vietnam vet. Right. I think she was able to get a lot of her feelings about the war and about Vietnam veterans who she'd worked with right. as a political activist. Has she talked to you? Have you talked? Has she talked to you since your book came out about about your book? She she talked to me just before <coughs> it came out, and uh, I sent it to her. Of course, you know she gave me total access, no restrictions, and it wasn't authorized either. She didn't you know approve of the text, but she said she liked it and she had loved the pictures. She had not seen a lot of the pictures, even though there are a million pictures of her on the mm -hmm. web. Um, I think if if I if she had not liked something, she would have told me because we're very so honest. When with you each say other. total access, did you did you interview her constantly? Oh, okay. yeah, a great deal. 
interviewed her down at the ranch for one week, and then every time I saw her, whenever she came to New York or I went out to California, I saw her. So over a 10-year period, yes, a lot. Okay. Do you, what insights did you gain from writing the book that surprised you the most, or what information that did you gain that surprised you the most? Well, well she is really, the, she's the most <laughs> astonishing uh, human being I think I've ever met in that she gets so much out of her life, out of her days, the way she organizes herself. I'd never seen anybody who, who got so much out of one day. I also... And it's pretty much scheduled. It's every, every, everything <laughs> every down, to, down to the minute. Uh, I, I admire that. Also her, her curiosity about people and about places and she's always interested in in something new. She has a great interest in, in found art, for example. There's lots of stuff that I wasn't able to put in the book about her mm -hmm. because she has, her, her, her interests are so wide ranging. Mm -hmm. it, she's an inspiration mm -hmm. to be with. And she's gotten regard. back into acting somewhat. She, yes, she has. She was in a, a Broadway play. A Broadway show, she was wonderful. That was pretty successful. 33 variations, I saw it many times. And a movie that wasn't so hot that I saw. <laughs> No, you didn't like Monster in Law. <laughs> no, uh, th not that one. It's a one. Uh, Somebody's Rules. Georgia oh, Rules. Georgia Rules. I sort of like that. Did you? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay. I did. Okay. <laughs> she was different in that. Yeah. With Lindsay Lohan, who she did not like. Did she not? <laughs> no, they, they did not I'm get not along surprised. at all. Remember she washed her mouth out with soap, I think, at one point? Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So do you, you, do you predict that she'll be doing some more acting? We'll oh, see yeah. More. I think she's developing something now which she doesn't want to talk about. I believe it's a series of some kind. How old is she? She's 73. Wow, wow. Do you see lessons for other women in Jane Fonda's life? Well, I, I think, yeah, I suppose there, there are many lessons to be learned. One, I think if you do become a political activist or you want to get into, into politics, you really have to be informed before you start. I think th it was very difficult for her because she, she was so public. Uh, that people noticed her, listened to her, and then sometimes ridiculed her mm -hmm. because she didn't know what she was talking about. Now, she's amazing when she talks about any set, anything. Do you have another project underway or thinking about well, the next project? I Yeah, I am. But do you really want me to talk about it? Yes. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I'm actually writing a screenplay about my life in pornography. I believe did it or not. Did you have a life in pornography? I did. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> when I was very young, I worked for Bob Guccione. I was the editor of the magazine called Viva. And a couple of years ago, I wrote a piece about it in Vanity Fair about my, my life with, in pornography with Bob, who at that point had, was sort of a failure. I mean, he'd, he'd lost all of his money. To make a long story short, I wrote about Bob then and now and my experiences working with Bob. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's been optioned uh, for a movie. Okay. And so that's now, what, what did you do for him? Did, what I, I was the editor of a, a, a female I porn see. magazine, I which see. we I tried to make it into an erotic magazine uh -huh. for women, but Bob wanted it to be pornographic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't work. It was very schizoid, but it was it was quite interesting. Okay. And and it was at the time when feminists were fighting against <coughs> pornography, so there was that too, uh, because all my feminist friends were very angry. Mm -hmm. uh, that I worked at this magazine because I, I too was a feminist. But later on, they, they started writing pieces for me. I tried to get serious, interesting pieces about women in the magazine, but it didn't work because okay. mixture of porn and so we can look erotica. forward to that. Yes, I guess so. I hope okay. so. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're out of time, uh, but I want to thank Patricia Bosworth for joining me. Jane Fonda: The Private Life of a Public Woman has just been published by Houghton Mifflin. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy.